What's going on guys? Hope you are having a great day out there today. So guys, today we are working on the Outcast 8S shocks. These monsters here, I got the back shocks pulled off of the Outcast 8S EXB. And uh, you know, one of the things I've been talking about every time running this car is the rebound and the kicking that is going on in the back end of this car. And I did the same thing to my Creighton 8S up there. Um, I did the M2C valve kit and the uh, 35 weight. I don't remember if I put 30 or 35 in the Creighton, but I'm going to go with the 35 weight uh, Team Losey Racing shock oil. And uh, we got the M2C Racing valve kit. And uh, this right here is the part number. And we are going to get these drained out and get the new valve kit in these things and some new oil. And uh, get these things test fitted back up and uh, hopefully it helps with that kicking and bucking that happens happening on the back end of that car especially in hard landing it just bounces so hard um, you know a lot of times it shoots it, its back end back over itself so this worked out pretty good on the Creighton 8s so hopefully it works out good on the outcast guys but we're going to get work on this thing i'm going to kind of bring you along at some different stages obviously i'm not going to sit here and draw this out into a, an hour long video so i'll bring you guys back when i start disassembling these and getting it together all right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started in tearing these apart. Get that spring pulled back. I'm sure many of you know how to disassemble <laughs> the shocks. But um, got this nice handy-dandy little shock tool to be able to remove your shock shafts off of here, or the shock end, should I say. Works great. If you don't have one of these, highly recommend one. You know, I didn't have one for the longest time. and didn't think I really needed one until I had one and realized... Uh... How much I wish I'd had one before. <laughs> but uh, we'll get that unwound off of there. And. Alright. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the top pulled off of this thing. I'm not going to bore you guys with every single shock. But show you just the process of tearing these things down. So once you get that stuff off of there. Just go ahead and unwind the mile long cap. And inside there will be your rubber bladder. Make sure you keep a hold of that. And I just noticed inside of here, if you guys can see that, they're actually pretty low on oil, too. They're not filled to the top at all. That's real nice. But I got my handy Burger King cup here. I'm not going to save this oil. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what it is, but I have tons of oil. I'm not going to keep a hold of this old stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and drain this old stuff out. I'm going to let this drip here for a moment and clean them out. And then, well... Guess we don't have to wait too long. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and then once that stuff's pretty well drained out of there, you can kind of push it up and it'll push the rest of it out. And then grab a hold of the end here and slide the, the end out. So now we got that out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit upside down over here and drain out on the paper towel. And these are what we're changing out, are the valves. And uh, I gotta double check which ones are for the front and which ones are for the back. I think the black are for the back shocks, yeah, and the white are for the front. And from what I'm reading now on the M2C site is that on some of these, you'll see there's like little slots. These are actually facing upwards, I believe. I can't remember. I'm actually going to have to go look on the M2C site again because the first time I did these on one of the Creighton 6S, I thought the valves went up or down or vice versa, and I was wrong. <laughs> So I'm going to double check that real quick on the M2C site of which direction the valves face um, before I put these on. And I'll bring you guys back whenever I'm sure. All right, guys. So I just double checked um, on the M2C site. And the black ones do go in the back shocks. The front ones are for the white. These are your O-rings that go on the outside. And the seven slots, as you can see right here. I'll pull these out of the package. But one side has just the holes and one side has these little slots. The slots face downwards. They said for better dampening now on the new version. So make sure those seven slots are on the downward position so that basically they're facing down here on the piston. So when it's going up, it's creating more better dampening, they're saying. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these removed. The first one removed off of here. Use the handy dandy shock tool. And these are a seven, I guess these are seven millimeter nut driver. Go ahead and screw the nut off of there. Yeah, leave it on there. And 
Oh, these are pretty tight. There they go. Now, on one side, there is a metal washer. I'm assuming this is going to come off like most of the other ones. I'm going to see, actually. Yep. There it goes. So on one on the bottom side, you will see this metal washer. I'm assuming, but i got to look here in the package, that we need the washer on these ones also. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of the black ones out of here. Dropping stuff, you know. Grab one of these rubber O-rings. Alright. Hands aren't working very good tonight, guys. So, you'll see there's a little slot in the valve there. I'm going to go ahead and get that rubber O-ring seated around there the whole way real nicely. Make sure it's seated in that slot. You'll be able to kind of push on it, and it'll eventually all seat in there. But, uh... So I'm not seeing the same indent that the stock, you know, piston has. But I know that this has to use the metal washer on here, so I'm putting the metal washer back on there, obviously. But uh, go ahead and drive the nut back on there again. Give her a good crank down. And that is it. So now on the top, we have just the valve holes. And on the bottom, we have the holes with the slots. A rubber o-ring on there Been letting this drain out I'm gonna go ahead and give this another wipe on just stick a paper towel down in there to help clear out that last little bit of old oil the all that nice yucky stuff and then we can go ahead and drop our piston back down in there be real gentle pushing that back in there making sure that rubber o-ring seats nicely in there you'll be able to feel it that feels that feels good. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, get everything seated back on here again. I'm going to go ahead and thread, start threading the shock end back on here again. Grab a hold of it with the pliers. You know, guys, my basement reeks like lumber right now. In a second, I'll show you guys why. <laughs> now, probably when you're seeing this video, you guys have already seen... Maybe a post and some stuff on YouTube. But I got this going on behind me. This enormous ramp. What I'm trying to even get the whole top of it. Yes, that is a big ramp, guys. It's standing up on end right now. But this is going to be the ramp that I'm going to be using to jump over top of my local hobby shop. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, they're doing a commercial. They want to do a commercial for the hobby store. And as part of it, they want to have me jumping one of... Uh, actually going to be using my Typhon 6S. And we're going to be launching it over top of that... Um, the, you guys have seen it in the videos a couple times. That big ship, that, that big giant airplane looking toy store, the hobby shop I go to all the time. So, it should be pretty cool. I'm excited to uh, to do this, but... Anyway, guys, I'm just going ahead and filling up the shocks now, almost to the top. And then I go ahead and run this valve up and down. You want to go ahead and run it a few times, and you'll notice the air bubbles start popping up by the top. Because especially sometimes when you bring it down that downstroke, sorry, off camera there, I couldn't even see that. But you'll see the bubbles kind of forming up out of the top a little bit. But I'm going to let these settle for just a second. And I'll bring you guys back whenever the bubbles have finished forming. Because we're not all going to stand here and watch bubbles rise to the top. <laughs> I'll bring you guys back in a moment. Alright guys, well we got the... Uh, everything looks all settled. And I got it filled up about... See, the, about the thickness of the adjuster here is how close I leave it away from the top. And I go ahead and get this thing screwed back down and make sure that the dampening feels right on the rebound of the shock in here. Or on the rod whenever you collapse it. Now before you screw it the whole way down, I usually run it up and down once or twice. Um, just to make sure that there's any last air pushed out of there. And give that its final crank down. Give it a tight down and then it should rebound itself back out very slowly on its own that's how i've always set mine up and they've always worked pretty decent guys so 
make sure that's all nice and snug and tight. Don't crank it down too much. Um, you can actually push out that rubber O-ring or the rubber bladder out of the top. So you don't want to go too crazy. Just You'll be able to feel it seat down and then just give it like another half turn after that. And that should be pretty good. But that's how you want them. So I'm going to go ahead and get the spring back on here again. And let me tell you, getting these springs seated on here are a little tougher than the 6S cars. <laughs> that spring's got some tension, guys. But that is it. So we got one shock done. Got the new valve kit in it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other one done and uh, bring you guys back. We're getting these mounted back up on the car, guys. I do have the fronts also, and I am going to be doing the fronts, but I'm not going to bore you guys with all that. I'm just going to go through the back shocks with you because it's the same thing on the front. No difference, same process. So I was just tearing down the other shock here, and I just wanted to mention it's a good idea, um, guys, whenever you're going to be tearing these down and sliding the shaft the whole way through, you know, all your O-rings, make sure you give this thing you know, the shaft a good wipe down and make sure it's nice and clean and free of any dirt that you're not going to be pushing into your O-rings and, you know, all that. I mean, the O-ring will usually kind of wipe and clean all that stuff off on the outside, but it's usually a good idea. Also, guys, I brought you guys back because, you know, if you guys have, you know, the RTR or the uh, you know, Outcast EXB, I would definitely check those shocks if you haven't already because every one of these shocks now have been really low on oil. I mean, this is about just a tiny bit above the block adjuster here right now. I mean, there's a lot of oil that these things are missing. I don't know what's going on with armor quality control, but I mean, as everyone knows, the differentials have been coming really low on fluid. The shocks are coming low on fluid. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, at least send them out of the factory filled the way that they're supposed to be from the factory. I mean, you don't think it'd be that hard, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and get this one dumped out and basically do the same thing and get this one fixed up, guys. So I'll bring you guys back when I get the back ones all done. All right, I lied. I brought you back sooner. <laughs> Just in case anybody wanted to see this one more time, you know, changing out the piston here. Again, remember to get the metal washer off of the back because you do want to put these on the new ones because if you don't all that pressure you know you can see the factory ones kind of have a slight indent where the washer goes now the m2c ones do not but if you don't put this washer on it gives the surface a lot more a lot smaller surface area for the piston to basically punch its way through because now you're giving it a lot more surface area so it doesn't break these pistons um you know the valve so I always put them back on there again. I don't know if everybody does, I'm assuming, but I think it's a good, it's a better idea because if you don't, it's a good chance you're going to punch your shock shaft right through that piston um, on a really hard, nasty landing. So, go ahead and give it a nice little crank down again and let me go ahead and get these things in there. I'm excited to take this thing out, guys, and give it a rip with the new valves because, you know, it's been one, one of the little downfalls of it, of the car, has been the uh, suspension you know it's been a little bouncy and a little rough so i bought four bottles of oil because i wasn't sure i couldn't remember how much was in each one i guess i got a little bit too much oil but i always use the 35 weight in the heavier car so i got an extra bottle looks like one bottle will do two shocks so if you're doing these two bottles um is enough to do you know all four shocks just so you guys know so you don't have to buy four bottles like i did but uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this thing and let the air bubbles float out of this thing. And uh, this time, I will bring you guys back when we're all finished up. All right, guys. Well, time to get her fitted back up again. So, just in case you guys wonder, there are two different length screws. The longer ones are for the bottom of the A-arms. The shorter ones are for the top. In case uh, you lost track, <laughs> figured I would mention that. But... Got a three millimeter. Go ahead and give those a crank down. Gonna get these top ones fitted back up. And this is these things right now are the cleanest part of this entire car. Had this thing down at the motocross track and uh, gave her some pretty decent sends down there, guys. And uh, she has been holding up pretty well. But you know, some people were asking in the last jumps on this thing. I mean, it was absolutely just sending this thing. 
And I did finally have my first bendage breakage with this thing. And what I ended up doing, I did tweak the chassis inwards. I'll bring you guys in here real quick and show you. So, two of the issues I was having with this thing with on the big launches was breaking the center brace ends. The rear had the plastic still. I haven't broken the rears yet, but on the front, I kept breaking them. So I have replaced these and put the M2C Racing aluminum you know, ends on these things. So hopefully these stop breaking. Hopefully it doesn't start causing something else to bust, like these shock towers or something, but uh, we will see. But I do have them on the front and the back sections of you know the front half of the uh, center braces. So the only other thing I've had happen to this, and whenever, I think whenever these broke, whenever I snapped this, it caused the chassis to kind of tweak. Because if you look down, you can see that this mud guard is slightly towed inwards. And that's because the chassis is bent outwards a little bit. Um, not too bad, but it does. I'll see if I can see if you guys can see this on camera. Probably not. It's not bad enough that you can really see it like that, but... At any rate, guys, I did con concave the chassis a little bit. Um, but I did straighten it out a little bit, and I got these ends on here. I might change out the chassis at some point, but I don't want to put the M2C on it, really, because it, it just adds so much weight to these cars. Um, you know, after driving Earl Moorhead's, um, you know, fully decked out M2C uh, chassis one, you know, you really do feel the weight. I know the chassis hold up better, obviously. Um, however, it adds a lot of weight to the cars, so I'm a little bit hesitant about doing that. So I'm going to go this route for a little bit. If I continue to bend it really bad, then I might look into doing something different with the chassis. But for the time being, just going to uh, upgrade, you know, the supports for the chassis to try to keep it straight and see what happens. <laughs> but at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and get these last shocks on there. But other than that, other than trying to get the suspension... Um, you know, a little bit better suspension under this thing so it doesn't bounce and land so hard. So that's why it made me want to do this because I really liked what it did to my Creighton 8S. So I figured to do the same thing to the Outcast here. I've been trying to get this done and we've been between weather and other things trying to go out whenever it actually isn't raining because it seems to be the most rainiest state in the entire country right now. <laughs> Pennsylvania has been a mess. But, um, but no, we got the Valve kit now, the M2C cap valve kit on the back of this thing. I'm going to work on the front. I'll just do that off camera. I'm not going to bore you guys with all that. I'm going to go ahead and get the wing and the wheelie bar mounted back up on here. And uh, that's going to do it and take this thing out on another rip here. Hopefully this week. Um, supposed to have some half decent days. So hopefully I'm going to take this thing out here, give her another run, and see how I like this new suspension setup. And I'll definitely let you guys know in the video, you know, on the next run on this thing on uh, how I like it. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, first time I was getting the uh, new valve kit on the Outcast 8S here. And hopefully it helps this thing out a little bit. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming along, guys. Really appreciate the support always. But until uh, next time, y'all, be safe. Be careful out there. Peace out, everybody.